If you've been following the channel for a while, then you might have heard me say that range anxiety isn't a real thing in an owner of an EV. You are not at risk of running out of charge and being stranded on the side of the road. And then it happened to me, and it wasn't fun. Pull up a chair and let me tell you a story. It's no fun when things don't go to plan. Last week I had to take the car for its MOT. I'd charged it up beforehand and so I knew I had as much charge as it could hold. And off we went. The journey there went fine and the car passed its MOT. But the people at the MOT station warned me that the battery was getting low. So I started the return trip with some trepidation. The car was running its fans a lot on the way home, which was concerning. And the timing wasn't great as I got stuck in school traffic on the trip back. The meter started showing that the battery was being depleted faster than I had expected. I went from concerned to very stressed as I watched the numbers tick down. And sure enough, when I got to the top of my own road, the dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree. I was totally out and the car was dying on me. It was horrible. I did make it home and immediately plugged the car in to get it charging again. But it was certainly as close as I ever want to come to being out of charge, that's for sure. Sorry, the Renault Zoe. No, no, this wasn't my EV. No, no, this was Candy, my petrol smart for two. For whatever reason, the smart has stopped charging its 12 volt battery. I knew this before I set off, as it happened while checking the car over. The red battery warning light didn't go out when I took it for a pre-test run. I had quickly stopped and checked that the V-belt was still in place, as the same V-belt that drives the alternator also drives the water pump, and you don't want to be driving a car without the water pump turning. But sure enough, the belt was fine, so I assessed the risk of a major breakdown to be small and went to the appointment anyway. An MOT is time sensitive, of course, especially on an old car like my 25 year old Smart. I wanted to know what other faults might be found to help me decide what to do about the car, whether to get it repaired. Some years ago, I had a fault with another of my Smarts. I'd occasionally turn the key and nothing would happen at all. This went on for a number of months, and to help me diagnose this, my friend Tony had bought me a digital voltmeter that plugs into the cigarette lighter socket, the 12 volt accessory socket. So I used that to help me keep an eye on the battery voltage as I went to the MOT, which confirmed that the alternator isn't outputting anything and that the battery discharges as you drive it. Now this story isn't intended to provoke the lovers of internal combustion. After all, this was caused by an extremely rare fault condition. And what's more, the car got me where I needed to go and back, just. But I did think there were a couple of interesting takeaways from the story that prompted this video. Firstly, I thought it amusing and ironic that I should get range anxiety and it not be in an EV. There are people who consider that range anxiety will be a risk in one of those but that's not been my experience. In the smart, I didn't know exactly how the 12 volt battery would behave, what discharge curve I might expect, or at what voltage the car would be unable to function. I only had a very simple readout of the voltage of that battery, and it wasn't being translated into time or distance by anything. And that's what caused me anxiety. The experience in an EV is very different. On the dashboard of any electric vehicle, you get a very clear indication of the remaining range of the car. You are told how far it can get you. To be fair, it is an estimated range, and I wouldn't be so bold as to trust it exactly. I would always want to get home or to a charger with a few miles of remaining range. But the display is much more useful than the simple voltage readout I had in the Smart. We understand what lithium ion batteries do very well, and can calibrate the readout to give a clear remaining range. What is more, in a car with a large range to begin with, leaving yourself even a small percentage buffer buys you a lot of spare range. 
The second key takeaway from the story is about charging. On my way home from that MOT centre, a journey of just over nine miles, I drove past no fewer than 14 sites where I could have charged my EV. Any one of the 50 connectors at those sites would have allowed me to top up, but sadly none of them could help me in my ICE car. I was suffering a rare fault that our environment is not well configured to cater for, but that's no longer the case for EVs. The final key takeaway from this story might be how difficult it can be to keep old cars running. The transition away from ICE cars is now inevitable and we all have to be mindful of that. If your plan is to avoid the change by keeping your old ICE car going indefinitely, then I would remind you of my woes with the smart. Keeping old cars running can be hard, so don't paint yourself into a corner mentally. Change is difficult. We are generally not good at accepting change, especially if we feel it is being forced upon us. But what makes it hard is our fear of the unknown. Sometimes we have to steel ourselves and embrace the reality that change will happen. The more we can educate ourselves about an upcoming change, the less anxiety we will feel. And we should also try to keep in mind that we have experienced change before. Those changes were never quite as bad as we might have feared at first. In summary, range anxiety isn't the reality of owning a modern EV. The cars have a lot of range to begin with. The readout of the remaining range is clear and accurate, and there are now plenty of places for a quick top up if you ever need one. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome. Have you ever suffered range anxiety? Is it a problem that is a reality for you? If you've liked the video, then it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And it would also help me achieve my stretch goal for the channel if you would subscribe as well. Thanks.